Hello and welcome to video 38. Uh, here we're going to analyze a situation where you have a bike pedal and you're going to be applying a force over here at the pedal that's 15 centimeters away from the center axis and there's a crank that's sort of where the little teeth are that, that hold the chain and that's going to be 15 centimeters away and as you can guess there's sort of a mechanical advantage there but we're going to talk about this in terms of torques and as a result of you pushing down on this pedal and also being connected to this back wheel, there's going to be a tension in this chain. So you've got a torque on this wheel from you pushing the pedal and from the chain pulling on the uh, crank in sort of the opposite rotational direction. And we're going to calculate what that torque is, then assuming it's a constant speed, so we're dealing here with equilibrium, we're going to figure out what the uh, torque is on this back wheel and the torque that's on that back wheel as you might expect depends on the size of this tension pedal harder you're gonna get more torque in the back wheel but it's also gonna depend on the relative uh, radius at which you're applying that force so the gears in the back really determine that we're gonna assume that that gear has a radius of three centimeters in the back so as is usually the case you have a bigger uh, radius at the crank than you do at the the back of the tire um, that's going to allow you to rotate this many times for every one rotation here, which is usually what you desire on the bicycle. So let's start to look at this. Uh, in terms of forces, you've got a force that you're applying down. We'll call that the weight force. Uh, there's a tension here, which on this circle, there are going to be two circles going around, the green one or the crank and the blue one or the tire. Uh, you've got a tension force that basically uh, goes this way so they're trying to rotate it in opposite directions keep in mind we've defined positive rotation as counterclockwise and negative rotation as clockwise uh, so we're gonna figure out the torque on this one that's gonna be our first step so let's just go ahead and do that uh, the torque on the crank is going to be equal to well torque is radius times force so it's going to be the radius of the crank times the uh, tension is going to be the positive, remember this is the positive direction torque, and there's going to be a negative torque from uh, you pushing down. Now the radius you're pushing down is different here. This distance is going to be the distance from the center to the pedal, so it's going to be our pedal, and the force is going to be the weight force. And this has to be equal to zero if we're at a constant speed. So we're assuming that you're in uh, an equilibrium here. So how much torque do you apply? The amount of torque you apply, which is right here, oops is going to be equal to your radius. Let me go ahead and plug in some numbers here. Uh, and to get the actual torque in the correct units, we do need it to be in meters. So that torque is going to be uh, 0 0.15 meters times your weight force, which is going to be the mass, 75 kilograms, times, let's go ahead and assume that for the purposes of this problem, G is 10 meters per second squared. So we do weight equals mg, that's going to be 750 uh, newtons. And that's going to be a torque that is 112.5. And we like to make a distinguish, uh, or a, make a distinction here in terms of units. Uh, we like to actually write this as meters times newtons, even though there's nothing technically wrong with newtons times meters, only to avoid confusion with work. Remember a newton meter from work equals force times distance is a joule, but this is not a joule. You can't rewrite this as joules. So this is a torque that the rider is applying to the crank. So uh, we'll call this uh, from the pedal. So the torque from the pedal is 112.5 meters newtons. Now to figure out the tension we've got a solve this. So the tension is going to be equal to, uh, if I just solve this, 
the radius of the person times the weight over the radius of C, the crank, so that's the G. So it's some fraction of the weight force, which makes sense. It's sort of like a lever, just a rotational analog. And uh, the radius of the pedal was 15 centimeters, and the radius of the crank was 10 centimeters. I'm going to go ahead and leave that in centimeters because this is really just a ratio. The units cancel out. So what you wind up with is something that's 1.5 times the weight force. And if the weight force is 750 newtons, that's going to give us a tension that is uh, 1,125 newtons. So now let's go ahead and look at the rear tire. Uh, when you look at the rear tire, we're analyzing the forces here. Uh, the tension is going to be applied to the right. And you're also going to have a force from friction. That force is actually going to move, or not move, but it's going to be applied in the rightward direction. So this tension is trying to rotate it clockwise or in the negative direction, and this friction force is trying to rotate it counterclockwise or in the positive direction. And since we're assuming that this is moving at a constant velocity, these two torques have to be equal to one another. So let's go ahead and just calculate that torque. Um, the torque due to the tension is going to be equal to uh, the radius. Now, keep these radii straight. Uh, the radius of the gear, so the teeth where it applies on the back, has a radius of 3 centimeters. Call it the radius of the gear. And the force that's being applied is the same tension as before. Much like in a uh, pulley, the force of tension is the same everywhere throughout the rope. Same goes for the chain. Remember, we're assuming that this is fairly slack and doesn't really contribute significantly to the torque. Um, when we go ahead and we plug in the numbers, the radius of the gear is 0 0.03 meters. And I'm going to use meters because to get torque, you need meters at least in the units we use. Uh, the tension is still going to be 1,125 newtons. And when we put that together, we're going to get a torque that is... Sorry about that. Uh, when you plug that in, you should get 33.75. Again, the units are going to be meter newtons. So this will be the torque given to the back wheel by the tension. To figure out the friction force, it's really similar to before in that we know the uh, magnitude, anyway, of the torque provided by the friction has to be the same as the magnitude of the torque provided by this tension. More formally, the net torque on the tire has to be equal to the torque due to friction, which is in the positive direction, minus the torque due to the tension, which is in the clockwise or negative direction. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write it out in variables, even though we've solved for many of these things already. But the torque due to friction is going to be the radius of the tire times the magnitude of the friction force. And the torque due to tension is going to be the radius of the gear on the back wheel times the tension force. And recall from the other uh, page here that the tension we were able to express as this, RP over RC times W. And I'm only doing this so that I can write it strictly in terms of the radiuses. I think it's a nice way to do it, but you don't have to. Uh, again, the total is zero. So bringing uh, this over to here, you're going to get RG T equals RTF or F equals RG over RT, where T is tire, uh, times the T here, which is tension. And then I'm going to plug this into here. That's going to give me a friction force that is equal to R. G over RT times RP over RC, 
times the W, Whew, which is a mouthful. Basically what that's saying is that the uh, amount of friction force provided here is some fraction of the weight force that the person stepping on the pedal with, and that uh, fraction is a function of the size of the gear in the back, the size of the pedal, the size of the crankshaft, and the uh, size of the tire. Uh, let's go ahead and plug these numbers in here. Because we're going to wind up with just a fraction, I'm going to leave it in terms of the centimeters. The RG was uh, 3 centimeters. The uh, radius of the pedal, or the distance to the pedal, was 15 centimeters. The size of the tire was 30 centimeters. And the radius of the uh, crank was uh, 10 centimeters, rather. Times the weight force. So you wind up with basically 45 over 300, which is the same as 15 over 100. So basically 15% of the weight force is what you get as, as friction. So 0 0.15 times the weight force, which we saw was 750 newtons. And that's going to give you a friction force that the tire is providing of 112.5 newtons. Now, it's worth looking at this equation and seeing that for a given friction force that you want, which translate loosely into F equals MA and acceleration, uh, it's going to be a function of these four variables. Now the tire, you can't really change that for a given bicycle. The uh, pedal is usually pretty well set where it is, but what you can control on a lot of bikes, 10-speed bikes, 18-speed bikes, etc., are these two uh, variables. The size of the um, gear in the back and the size of the, the crankshaft here. And if you look at this, you will find that the weight force, or the force that you're applying, I should say, is directly proportional to the, uh, let me use a thicker marker, is directly proportional to the size of the crankshaft, and it is inversely proportional to the size of the gear. What that means is, for a uh, bigger gear, you're going in the in the back. The bigger this is, the less force you're going to have to apply to get that same uh, friction with the ground, that same uh, acceleration. Because as this gets bigger, you have a uh, better ratio in terms of your radius compared to the tire's radius. It's still going to be. Uh, less for you, kind of like a, a second class lever, you're going to have to apply more force, but um, it does get easier to pedal and have the same uh, acceleration. Also in terms of the crankshaft, as the crankshaft gets bigger, you're going to have to push harder because you have less of a mechanical advantage between your pedal and this crankshaft. To make it really easy to pedal, what you would do is you would make this radius smaller, so you'd use a gear here that's closer to the axis. The downside is, even though it takes less force, you're going to have to pedal many, many times to go the same distance. It's just a side note. Found it interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what would happen if you were to roll over a frictionless patch of ice. So if you were to do that, the tire would then accelerate angularly. So we're going to make an assumption here that uh, the tire receives the exact same torque from the tension and that that's the only torque acting on the rear tire when we remove the friction here. And uh, we're going to figure out what the angular acceleration of the tire is going to be. So to do that, we're going to assume that the net torque, first of all, net torque equals I alpha, similar to the way F net equals M A. Uh, it's not as simple as depending just on the mass. How much resistance there is to a rotational change also depends on the distribution of the mass, also known as rotational inertia. And we're assuming here that for this tire, all of the mass is on the outside of the tire. Uh, this is a 5 kilogram tire, 
it still has that same radius of 0 0.3 meters. So to calculate the rotational inertia, it's going to be simply mr squared. We're plugging in the uh, values 5 kilograms times the radius of 0 0.3 meters squared, which is going to give us a rotational inertia of 0 0.45 kilograms meters squared. Don't forget about the units. In terms of the net torque, uh, we already calculated the uh, net torque, but we can we can calculate that again. Uh, that net torque we're going to assume is all from the tension, so the uh, size of the uh, gear in the back times the tension force. If you recall, the radius of the gear in the back was 0 0.03 meters. The tension force was 11.25 newtons which gave us a torque of 33.75 meters newtons again being careful with the units so if I want to figure out the angular acceleration it's simply going to be net torque divided by rotational inertia so we have figured these out so it's going to be 33.75 meters newtons over 0 0.45 kilogram meters squared which is going to give us 75 radians per second squared which is going to be our uh, final answer important ideas to remember from this last part of the problem is that the net torque is analogous to the net force angular acceleration is analogous to regular acceleration and be careful you can't just plug in the mass here you have to use the rotational inertia but if you plug in the rotational inertia and the net torque you'll get the angular acceleration or vice versa just like anything else in physics you can always solve for the unknown variable uh, looking back here uh, we talked about the torques on the different parts of the bicycles and the key concept with this one was that it was in equilibrium so we could assume that the net torque on each circle had to be zero. Using that information we were able to solve for the missing force, the tension, knowing that that tension was the same everywhere throughout including at the wheel. We were able to calculate the torque provided to the wheel by the tension and then knowing that this was not accelerating angularly we were able to set that torque equal to the torque provided by the friction and solve for the friction force and I thought this was a fun problem I hope you do uh, these videos always wind up being a lot longer than I anticipated but um, hopefully that's why they invented the fast forward button uh, until next time